Hi, this is the Chemistry for Biology channel. I'm John Irwin. This is, coming to, this is coming to you from the University of California, San Francisco, Department of Pharmaceutical Chemistry, the Scheuchert Lab, and the Irwin Lab. And this work is supported by the National Institutes of Health. And today's topic is downloading a database, whether for docking or chemoinformatics. We could have also called this, uh, this video tranches or the tranche browser. So if, you've, if you're used to Zinc 12, <clears throat> if, you're, if you haven't used Zinc 12 and you're starting with Zinc 15, just bear with me for a minute because this will also help you to understand why things are the way they are. In Zinc 12, and those of you who are familiar with Zinc 12 will remember that when we had property subsets, they were organized like this. Along the vertical, along the horizontal axis is the types of databases by properties. So lead-like up to 350 Daltons, fragment-like up to 250 Daltons, drug-like including both of those two plus more molecules up to 500 Daltons, and all. Okay? That's all fine and, and for each of these you can see the number of molecules when it was last updated. And then this axis was the standard subsets. This is what we ourselves use, so it's uh, in-stock and on-demand compounds. Uh, this is the clean subset. People said, oh, we don't want, you know, um, uh, Michael acceptors, thiols, and, uh, and so on. So we'll remove those. Um, in stock means the we want these compounds right now, two weeks in stock. We're not willing to wait eight weeks for delivery. And then boutique. These are the expensive compounds or could be expensive compounds uh, down below. And... and uh, there's a number of problems with this, uh, one of which is that these are mutually overlapping. So, for instance, lead-like includes drug-like, is included by drug-like, and all includes all of these three. Similarly, you, if you want to have in-stock and clean at the same time, there's no option for it. Similarly, if you want fragments, but just a little bit bigger than the fragments, let, let's say you want to have 300 instead of 250, or lead like you want 375 instead of 350. There's no way to easily do that with this system. And this became more and more obvious, and so we invented a new system which we call the tranche browser. So tranche is a French word meaning slice, and so it uh, Zinc 15 introduces the tranche browser, and, and uh, here's what it looks like. So along the horizontal axis is molecular weight, size, and these numbers are read as up to, so up to 200 Daltons, 250, 200, 250, 200 to 250, 250 to 300, 300 to 325, and so on. And then greater than 500 over here. And these are the totals. And the on the vertical axis, this is log P. It's obscured by the title, but it's uh, up to minus 1, minus 1 to 0, 0 to 1, and so on, greater than 5. And the totals are down here. And so you can see that there's a total of 116 million substances if you're willing to wait, so on demand, and you're willing to accept mild reactivity, Michael acceptors and thiols, for instance, which is our original subset. If you click on the 3D, these are all 2D molecules. We So one of the things features in Zinc 15 is we decoupled the smiles from the three-dimensional representation of the smiles. And so you, there's another tranche browser in 3D, and if you click on this button here, it will take you to that. First of all, it has to load the data, so depending on where you are in the world, this might take a few seconds. And then you see the 3D browser, and here's the, now we're in 3D. And the first thing you'll notice about this is, first of all, it's got the same dimensions, but the numbers are far smaller. Here it says 5.8 protomers, so 5.8 um, molecular representations. So, for example, histidine might have three. You know, the, the delta, epsilon, nitrogens both being uh, protonated and then the diprotonated or the, uh, the cationic side chain. So, you'll see the numbers are smaller across the board. You'll see that in, at high molecular weight that the numbers are really particularly small. And you'll see that I've prioritized here the uh, fragments. So we started by building the fragments because they're quickest to build, so the numbers go up fastest. And then we're pri beginning to prioritize the leads. But as you can see, 
in the sort of the lead-like regime, we're still looking at only a couple of million molecules, whereas there's now um, several million molecules in, um, in of, of fragments. So good thing, lots more molecules in zinc. Bad thing, it's taking us some time to build it. And so if we toggle back and forth between 2D and 3D, you can see the, um, the color shift. You can see the, the, and you can sort of compare uh, dimension for dimension, um, tranche for tranche. Uh, now, they're not, we're not exactly comparing the same thing because one of them is substances and one of them is protomers. Um, but if you were to select only the reference, then each molecule would be represented by only one protomer. So then the numbers would be comparable. I didn't do that in this example. Okay, so uh, there's a new paper out, uh, Zinc 15, Ligand Discovery for Everyone. We encourage you to download it and read it. It's all about our new ver version of Zinc, and you'll see that the uh, Tranche Browser is featured as the Table of Contents graphic. It's an uh, editor's choice at ACS, so it's free for everyone. And uh, I can just give you a little download, a, a little demo, because I think that will be helpful to see how it really works. So here we are at zinc15.docking.org and I switch into the Tranche Browser. And so here I am in 2D. And so here we have the purchasability, the reactivity axis. So the anodyne means it doesn't contain anything that anybody could complain about. No panes, no Michael acceptors, no thiols, nothing. Clean is our old definition from Zinc 12, and that means we're willing to accept panes patterns, uh, but nothing else. Mild is our old default subset from zinc, contains the slightly reactive compounds, and then reactive would include things like um, alkyl halides, for example, which are some cancer drugs are alkyl halides. Um, if you want to select each one individually, you can toggle on the exclusive choice, and now you can turn on each individual level by itself. For example, you can turn on that one. You can select one, two at the same, you can do one, each one individually is what I mean to say. So let's turn off exclusive, good, let's go back here. So purchasability, uh, in stock, agent, weight okay, boutique and annotated. So really, uh, this is purchased directly from vendor, purchased through a procurement agent like eMolecules or Maltport. This is what we used to call make on demand. So wait, it's okay to wait for the compound. Boutique is the expensive one, and annotated means you can't buy it, but it's interesting in some way. For example, it might be a natural product, or it might be in a uh, database like Kemble. And again, you can toggle these things on with exclusive. Now, in 2D, you can't select either pH or charge, but in 3D, you can. And so in 3D, you have the additional choice of selecting a pH range and a charge range for the molecules to, of which representations you want. So, for example, when we turn off, uh, th so this is just like in Zinc 12, reference is pH 7.4, mid is additional forms near physiological pH, high means around 9, 9.5, which is where sulfonamides deprotonate, thiols deprotonate, and low is around pH 5.5 uh, to 6, where benzimidazoles and even pyridines will protonate, depending on the substitution pattern. Those could be quite interesting. And over here, charge, the, we've used the uh, terminology of inchy keys. The last suffix indicates the net molecular charge. N is neutral. P, uh, P is two or more positive. L is two or, ne or, or, or more negative. And so you can selectively turn these off and say, because you know, you're know you only interested in um, either anions or neutral molecules, uh, you can you could do that. And now it's only going to allow you to download neutral molecules or anions, monoanions. We've got subsets that correspond to current opinion in the field. So thus, fragments, this is up to 250 Daltons, up to 350 in, uh, up to 350 in log P. Um, Lead-like, you can sort of see now, oops. Lead-like is the next tranche over. So it's basically from 250 up to 350 Daltons, still up to 3.5 log P. That just makes sure that the molecule is likely to be is likely to be soluble. Drug-like, much bigger. So here, now we're seeing drug-like. We've 
This is not exactly the Lipinski definition, but it's the one I chose. And what it means is that we've filtered out the very smallest molecules, the ones that aren't going to show up in a spectrophotometric assay. Because let's face it, that's what most people use. If you're not doing, uh, if you're not doing um, uh, biophys direct biophysical interrogation like fragment-based screening, SPR, NMR, or X-ray. And similarly, uh, log p, we've cut out things greater than log p of 5. It would be perfectly reasonable for you to cut out a little bit lower. To do that, you can toggle this on and off, and now you can suppress the, the 4.5, uh, uh, greater than 4.5 in log p. Similarly, we've cut out molecules greater than 500. It would be perfectly reasonable for you to turn that off and get fewer molecules, so only up to 450. So at least you have a little bit of ceiling to work with. The, as always, the totals are listed across the uh, across the side. Total of 2.9 protomers. Since we're in, since we've only asked for one protomer, one representation per molecule, the number of protomers is equal to the number of substances. So we're looking here at 2.9 million substances. Okay, in 1.5 million, 1.5 thousand tranches. So in order to download them, you click on this button. Now this each of our each of our tranches is encoded with a code. Don't worry about that now. It's explained on our wiki page, but these are the six-dimensional axes that you've just selected using the tool. And you can download the format that you like. For instance, SDF, MAL2, the AutoDoc format, PDBQT, or one of the three, the two doc formats that we ourselves use. Uh, you can also uh, download the molecules in Smiles if you want. But uh, let's say you wanted to download them in SDF. So you'd select there, SDF. And now do you want to download just the URLs to get these molecules? Or do you want to download, uh, do you want to download the molecules themselves using curl, wget, or PowerShell? Or do you want to, and do you want to download them as a, in, in a flat directory structure or in a hierarchical directory structure organized by tranche? So I'm going to select getting them by curl. SDF these tranches and I want all of them you could say only give me tranches that have been updated since November 1st let's say so because that was the last time you downloaded it you don't want duplicate copies download so it's downloaded a script and you can see it takes a few seconds and so now if I switch into my directory and I look there's the script that I've just downloaded and if I look at type more So this script, what is it say? What is it doing? It's saying curl, uh, and it's downloading the uh, tranches. It's going to put them. It's going to create a directory structure, a two-level directory structure, uh, which we can review. And then this is the URL to the individual SDF file. Okay. So let's try that. So let's just go uh, csh sync. Okay. And so now what it's going to do is it's going to start downloading those molecules. And that's terrific. Some of the so we're going to go into downloads again. And so now what you see is it's creating these directories. So BA corresponds to let's go back here to here. B is along this axis. So B is molecular weight this tranche and A is this tranche. So it's A B A. Okay? So there's BA, and if we go into CBA, and then inside there, there are additional subsets of, of directories. These are only the molecules we asked for, and the four dimensions that are represented in the, with these letters in, are the, uh, whether the reactivity axis, the purchasability axis, the pH axis, and the charge axis. And uh, again, it's, it's described on the wiki, but inside each of these files, let's say AARM, we go in there, and now we've got an actual file, BBAARM, so that uniquely specifies the six-dimensional um, way of selecting the molecules, and so now if you say Zmore, BAM, you can see there's your molecule, so that's the first molecule, and there's the second molecule, okay? I'm going to cancel this download, because otherwise it's going to fill up my my poor Macintosh disk. I'm going to switch back to here and just tell you that if you are interested in any one of these tranches, you can click on this button 
and it will let you see what the molecules look like in the usual zinc tool. Now in, we're back in two dimensions. And so if you also go down to, go back to here, okay, and if we look at, for example, the a tranche, this would be A, K, we can see these molecules are going to be very greasy, log P greater than 5, but small, small molecular weight, so less than 200 molecular weight. So I hope that that's been interesting. And uh, was it helpful? I hope you've learned that, and you can see how it works exactly the same way in 2D as it does in 3D. So you can download smiles or text files in 2D. And, uh, but this is, uh, I hope you've seen how the Zinc uh, Tranche browser works. I hope you have a, an idea of why we did it this way. It, it provides much more flexible subsetting of a large database. And on our side, it allows us to keep the database up to date without these duplications and overlaps and, and so on. So if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, visit our YouTube channel where you can subscribe. You can also visit us on Facebook or, or follow us on Twitter where we post updates to our database. This work was supported by the National Institutes of Health. See you next time.